Okay. So many a times you must have seen that if we are dealing with a patient of septic shock, the patient is on multiple anotropes like that. And if we do a uh, uh, capillary blood glucose level, it, it comes very low. And at the same time, if you take the uh, blood sugar from the arterial line, then the sugar levels come uh, normal like that. So yesterday also this happened, the peripheral blood sugar was uh, 63 and when the arterial sample was taken, it was 223. So why this happens, why the peripheral blood sugar levels are falsely low in septic shock and why they are unreliable. So there are two or three mechanisms. The first is the perfusion. Obviously, in the septic shock condition or in any shock condition, the priority is to uh, uh, the body should the flow to the vital organs and there's a peripheral vasoconstrictions to maintain the blood pressure. The flow is obviously slow and the velocity of the blood is uh, already slows down. Secondly, because of this, what happens, the blood remains in the capillaries slow for a longer period of time because of this slow flow and that's why the cells at the periphery extract the uh, glucose more. They get more time and they extract the sugars more. So this is one mechanism. Second, they shift to anaerobic glycolysis uh, in the septic shock. So this demands more glucose, so the extraction becomes more uh, high in that. So low perfusion followed by longer time of glucose extraction and the anaerobic uh, glycolysis. These are the uh, factors by which the peripheral blood sugars becomes very low. And that's why you need to take either the central line is there, you can take the blood sugar from there or the arterial sample is there. In fact, the larger the difference, some studies say the difference between the arterial and the interstitial blood sugar the larger the chances of uh, bad prognosis in such patients. So that's why don't rely on the capillary blood sugar in septic shock. Always take a serum or arterial sample to check that. Do read more about it.